highly honored because two of our favorite people are here, all the way from Spain. Um, two people that we respect and admire and have been learning from ever since we got we started this awakening path. Uh, we're here with Zen Gardner and Oli Damagard. Welcome to Zen and Oli. Hi. Thanks. Great to see you guys again. Yeah. Love your beautiful faces. Thank you. We feel so blessed to have you here with us today. Whenever, you know, we turn to your site and read one of your latest articles, especially when you're talking about the process of awakening, it's really reassuring and really helpful. So I, so I thought maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, big subject. <clears throat> what a process, huh? It's funny because when I write and, you know, I'm, I'm obviously going through something personally, and I start to open up to it and I want to address it. And as you address something, you know, that you're able to see more clearly and more comes to you as you, as you let it out, which I encourage others to do because it's really a, a secret to, to finding out more is to give out what you've got. Yeah. <clears throat> but really all I'm doing is tapping into the collective consciousness. So that's, that's why it will resonate with people so much because it's the same thing we're all going through. <clears throat> the tendency of humanity is to internalize and over-personalize uh, the causes for things we're going through, whereas very much of it, especially today, is external vibrational changes, um, that when they're also internal due to the fact that our collective consciousness is broadcasting. <clears throat> but we're tapping into the same thing, and that's what's so cool. And that's why, you know, we meet each other. When I first met Ole, you're just like, wow, it's, it's as normal as could be, like you always right. knew each other. You can talk about anything, you can laugh about everything. You know, it's just, it's just, the, it's just the best. And yet, on a, in a, at a very profound level, you can communicate about the most important things there are. <clears throat> so anyway, that, I mean, I think that's the way of life that all humanity is designed, designed to live. But the, yeah, the, the awakening process, I mean, it's starting to get, sound like an overly used term, but I don't think so, really. It's, it's a, uh, it's really best describes what, what people are going through and the fact that it's transitional and exploratory. It can be scary. It can be a lot of different things, but it's a shared experience. And that's another thing I like to address is how people tend to feel really alone when they first wake up because those around them usually haven't woken up at the same time. It's a very personal experience. Mm -hmm. And when they don't wake up, especially when it's your mate, that's a toughie. And you try to, you can't, you can't impart the awakening to someone else. You can do your best to help them, but um, it's, uh, it, it, it's really, and then your children, your friends, and you start talking about other stuff, and then all of a sudden they categorize you with one of these broad brush strokes of whack job, conspiracy theorists, whatever they want to say, <clears throat> and easily just sort of diss it off because they're not prepared to even consider it. But it's sure happening. And if you look at the, like you guys cover so well, that these, these, these changes, these transitions in the world around us and the way, the way you guys break it down, different trends, it, it, it's so empowering because others are seeing it or sensing it. And then when it gets described in a way that's really um, clear and, and revelatory, in fact, and you go, oh, or maybe it's informationally revelatory that, Oh, did you know he's the son of so-and-so and he was a skull and bones and blah, blah, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. People go, oh, I knew something was fishy. Or Ole was just saying now he found out something amazing, uh, a, new, a new clue to the, to the, uh, the Norway thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. You'll have to share that with us because we, we did a show a couple of months back on Norway and it was really fascinating. And as was your presentation at the Open Mind Conference, it's all about your heart, Ollie. It's all about your heart. It takes one to another one. Uh, thank you. So all anyway, right, can I hear about the Norway thing? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I just this very day found out that uh, uh, the police district that was responsible for the island where this mass shooting took place and where all of so many of the things went wrong, and which is also extremely close to... Uh, the war center of Norway, 
I mean, we're talking kilometers from that little, uh, uh, oh, it's, it's not a little town, it's a city called uh, Bernefosch. And that police district, the, the very day when this happened, there was an, uh, it was not the normal police chief that was there, she was on holiday, but another guy, and that guy is the son of a very, very famous scientist, Norwegian scientist, brain scientist, who was extremely involved in the 50s with MK Ultra. He was oh, employed right. by the CIA. He had a high rank in the, in the U.S. Army. Being Norwegian, that is almost unheard of. He worked a lot with the Spanish brain scientist Delgado, who could remotely control right. a, a, a radiant bull. Uh, and they did a lot of horrific things. And it seems like Norway was part of delivering sort of brain materials to the mm. CIA. I mean, patients being tested and tried out and flown overseas and done all kinds of weird things from a, uh, a mental uh, a home for mentally weak people. And that police chief is the son of that scientist. So, and so many things are connected to this type of uh, uh, mind control. Also, I, I was on Chip Tatum's uh, pr uh, program a, a few weeks ago, and it was amazing because through him, I was able to get so much uh, uh, confirmed of these things that I was on. One of the things I think I, I mentioned uh, on your show was that around the prison, that the grass was brown. Did I tell you that? Yes, I did that? mention that. Yeah. And Chip said, yeah, that, that's, that, that's a death zone. I said, wow. what? He said they dig down high voltage cables, and then there is a voltage on that's what kills the grassroots. But it's like uh, if somebody gets too close or somebody jumps the wall, they just turn the, the knob, you know, work, and you're a fried potato. And that's why I felt so bad there, because I couldn't understand why I, was, I felt nauseous. Mm. And he said, yeah, but these things take a, a long time to, to fire up. You know, so they need to have it on uh, at a certain voltage, and then they can just turn the, uh, turn it up and and kill wow. whoever. But uh, also, he confirmed the container with evergreen. He just laughed and said, "Oh, our old boys." <laughs> he also yeah. confirmed the implosion that that it, it seems like there was an implosion in in Oslo this day. He also confirmed about these suitcases, the, the people with the suitcases, or not suitcases, but, uh, well, type of suitcases, similar suitcases in the whole area, that these could very well be tar uh, marketing the target area. Uh, because either to avoid being uh, in the target zone or to point it, pinpoint it. And uh, that those are only needed when the exact explosion, implosion takes place. And that's why they could then move move around, and so they just went to the area to see the destruction. That's like yay, baby. <laughs> also, we also it seems like a friend of mine in Norway has identified three people on site on the uh, ent entrance site of the government building as the the three dancing Israelis from 9/11. Do you remember these? Yeah, yeah, there's five. You do? There were five. There was five, but, the, the, but there was three that was on television. There were three on the television. They went back to Israel afterwards. They were dancing and saluting the whole uh, thing when it went down. I think they even custom painted the van with the two towers and, uh, and an mm -hmm. explosion. And, and all. So they were famous for, as I remember, the three dancing Israelis. And we have the facial matches that seems very, very similar on some of the very first people that come to the area. And, uh, it looks like it looks like there's Austin. very few people. Looks like there's yes, really? very few people. Austin. And that as well was something Chip uh, uh, confirmed. He said, "Now listen, folks, you would be surprised of <laughs> how few in the assassination business that they are really there. There are very few people that have the organization, the budget, the skills to be able to carry these things out. So in practice." Fact, yeah, the practice yeah. as well. You need to be good. And if you're good, you're being used by whoever. It's like Chip was used by the Turkish, the Danish, the English, the French, you know, depending on what kind of operation was done. So... It's even true than the crisis actors. You see the same yeah. crisis actors yeah. cropping yeah. up.
Good job, Mary. I'm <laughs> much over in Boston for your yeah, next job. That's right. Change your hair color. You know the drill. Here's your script. That's right. And now, now I'm, I'm really digging into the 7-7 bombings in London as well, which is also unreal, I tell you. When you get into that one, it's just like... Amazing. Like my friend Sen, Sen says very often, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who you should call? You should call Seven. Because that uh, we've interviewed a woman named Seven. Have and, you interviewed her as well? Yes, and she's uh, she's a victim of of uh, uh, torture now because she's because she invented some wonderful things that the uh, that the control system is using. But what they do is they've been naming the Charlie Hebdo thing, seven seven bombing was all named after her. They created a uh, sitcom with using her name. And uh, I mean, it's, it's a whole psyop around her and her symbols. But she, uh, she knew about the 7-7 bombing and she tried to get the word out before it happened. But nobody would believe her. So, yeah, mm -hmm. she, we'll, we'll, we'll get you two hooked up because that's going to, that would be an interesting thing. she's been on Alfred uh, Weber's show as well, yeah. talking about these yeah. things a lot. I, I've never heard it. I, I, for me, it's a little strange that, it, that they will make such a focus on one single person or, around this, but I sure will want to listen and, and learn. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. But uh, this whole thing with this, uh, uh, this uh, mind control expert, I mean global expert, working for the OSS and the CIA, being a Norwegian guy, and the thing was his... Uh, his uh, whole work was financed in Norway uh, uh, by some one of the, the Sweden Norwegian uh, prime minister, but also one of the ministers, the uh, foreign minister, I think he was, and he was the father of Gru Harlem Brundtland, who was then prime minister of Norway and also one of the architects of Agenda 21. So you know, it, it just goes one big happy family. It's right. one big and. It seems like he was not her real dad. I mean, this is like a sitcom. Uh, her real dad seems to have been Willy Brandt. Do you know Willy Brandt? Yeah. The first German guy who was, uh, uh, he was uh, prime minister. Way back, huh? Yeah, way back. But he was also accused of being an agent, a CIA agent. There was a big scandal around him. Mm. I'm not sure if it was CIA, but he as an agent. As, uh, and... Uh, it, and they say that in these uh, levels of the elite at that time, there was a lot of interacting, you know, free sex and, and stuff like that. And there were all quite a few of these unwanted kids that suddenly were sure. sorry, pregnant. So she was, uh, her real biological dad seemed to have been Billy Blunt. But then she was just adopted to Sweden and grew up there, then went back to Norway and then came into this whole thing again. So... It is, it's just unreal when you look at it, it's like, uh, you know, Monty Python sometimes, it's not really like... Uh, what's amazing to me is that the way Ole um, has spotted all the consistent similarities between right, right back to JFK, and they go on through in such detail, and, and but, um, what do you call it? research detail, you know, it's such specific, you know, right. and each aspect, and that's why, you know, he's been able to call a couple of things, because it's, it's so crystal clear in his mind, and when you start adopting that mindset, it is so empowering, because we already can smell these things when they happen, right. but to be able to look for the exact um, elements, right. many of which he's come up with, I've never heard anywhere else, such as where uh, there's always a staging area nearby, where they've got a Get sure. The, get the, right where they've got to get these actors in place, and how they get everything you know, all the equipment in, in place. You know, I mean, obviously they have uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, exercises, drills mm -hmm. to help get everything in place. But where do they change their clothes? Where do they run them off to? And and so he go, go he looks at the city and he says, okay, right. yeah, there's a library near all of these things. Yeah, you see if there's a library here, and he goes backwards. 
sure enough, there's a library right there. And there's a library <laughs> in Oslo as well, right by the government building, where these two women, you know, the, the woman with the, pie, the thing sticking out of her head and the very body face, mm -hmm. they come out right where there's a government building where there's uh, the library, then there's a, an exit from the rear into the government building, comes out more or less exactly where they are first spotted. I would very much say, boom, in the library, go then the implosion, and to, so that they won't be hurt, you know, and then they are led through that, that building, and then they come out and start being followed. So, libraries are good. So, <laughs> <laughs> you see that lady with that with the unicorn thing yeah. sticking out of her head? Yeah, that it's was like, crazy. And then he helps her up. He takes her pulse, helps her up. There's four ambulances, and they take her to the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Act, this, it's time to go back for break. With, with the bloody face lady. Right. You know, time to get, let's get back to the library, ladies. Time it's to clean up. Unreal. These things, you know, when I find things like that, I just feel ten and out. You know, there's there's no discussion. No, this is also like right. I'm not I'm not being criticized by anyone almost because you you could, you start arguing about that one, it will just show you how stupid you are. Right. You know? And so, then the one I, that made me laugh this morning was well, the fact that they, that they, the one that made me laugh this morning was the fact that the security cameras never work anywhere. Yeah. In all the false lights. I, I spoke to a, a lady in Denmark who, who's married to one of the um, experts on 9-11, a famous uh, Danish professor, and she said, why don't we put together all the different uh, events where the cameras stop working? Yes. That's good, yeah. You can make quite a book of that, I tell you. I think you could, and it would be hilarious. And then these cameras, more or less, every single time are connected to Israeli Mossad companies. <laughs> it's the same company that are going international. And they usually buy them or take them over just before the event. Yeah. And you know, like for instance, the 7-7 the seven, seven bombings with a, with a bus that blew up, that parked right outside that company's office at the Tavistock Square. Oh, how convenient for them. There were, were even a car parked next to it where it said controlled demolition. Oh, it's from a company that they use for controlled demolition. It, it's standing like two meters from the bus. It's part of the crime scene. No. <laughs> oh, was that? Uh, but who's looking? You know, their biggest mistake, yeah, they should have oh. hired you so that you could have, you know, made sure that none of these discrepancies happened. That's what we've been talking happened. about. Yeah. See, he's going to get headhunted. Yeah. Right. Say, you got this down, man. Can you help us plan the next one? Right. Okay, We're know. making too many mistakes. You know, the bus itself had, had been prepared, cut out so that the whole top would blow off. <laughs> On the side... There's one, uh, it looks like from a cinema uh, poster, and it says uh, uh, something like pure terror, what a thrill, or something like that. And then on the other side, there's a poster sort of on the side of the bus blown up with a Coca-Cola bottle and an explosion behind it. Oh, man. You swear, they're doing these... They love to do that. <laughs> they love to flaunt, make <laughs> fun of us. So they nice. think, and and when this thing blew up, uh, this this bus, pe some people were stumbling out of the bus, you know, hurt and so, and they were met by people lying on the pavements already with bandages and and all of these things. <laughs> they call them walking wounded. Oh my! Just, uh, you know, well. it's it's unreal. And these drills in in uh, there were four or five preceding the London thing, with more than 1,400 people involved in the drills. And there was one big panorama, you know, panorama, it's one of the biggest BBC productions, you know, this panorama thing. And, and one year, I think it was one year before, they had a big thing on panorama, an evening show, one hour, where they went through a possible future scenario with the exact train station and a bus. Right goes through the whole thing and they say, you know, also that, uh, yeah, and then we need to make sure that uh, the news companies like this will just uh, stand down and take orders so we, you know, all of these things. And then it ends, the very last 
sentence they say before it fades out, but now you have been warned. Now you have been warned. Mm -hmm. Because I spoke to Chip about that as well. Do you, I think we spoke about karma, didn't we, one time? Yes. About uh, that these people behind these atrocities, they, they seem to, to, the way they see karma is that if you show the victim what is going to happen, and the victim does not react, that takes off the karma of the, the predator. Mm -hmm. right. It's just, you can blame yourself because you're so stupid. And here, I asked Chip about that, and he said, wow, I never thought of that, because that really makes sense, because he said they were never allowed to just go and kill someone, charming guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but they were, when there was a target, they always had to go and confront the target so that he could conform, as they said. He was given a chance to conform, and if not, then he was taken out. And Chip said, I, ne I really didn't like that part of it, because I said, if he's going to die, let's just go kill him, you know. But, that, I mean, he's a soldier, let's right. just do it. But, because he said, when you confront someone like that, you never know how they're going to react, maybe mm -hmm. they're going to start shooting at you. Right. Or, or, mm -hmm. So he was uncomfortable with that thing, but he said they always had to do that. And he said, now that makes sense when this karma thing that, that, right. that I mentioned. So I thought that was really interesting. It's like that article I wrote. Remember that one about the different, the, the galactic permission, I forget the terms, but all those different things, wondering if that's part of this, some universal law that you have to warn and is predictive programming part of that? Or is it just laying it out there um, to train people's minds so when it happens they accept it more readily? You know, all those different different layers There's of stuff. So many layers. But it makes such sense that uh, also it's like it's like the, the whole Mossad, Mossad credo in the heavy duty occult Zionists that they they have they give permission to their people to kill without conscience. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a it's a ritualistic thing. They actually go, the, the military there, when they're first being trained, they go to where the, um, not Mossad, what was the name of the place where they had that mass suicide? Oh, yeah, what was that called? Um, uh, such with the M. There was a thousand people committed suicide. Yeah. Anyway, they go there and they all take the oath that they would, they would commit suicide or just blow everything up in, instead of, being, of losing a, a battle, you know, like, like the Samson option. They, they make that vow, so the, the, that's deep inside their, uh, their commitment. It, it, it erases the, the guilt and the qualms so they can execute, excuse me, they can execute uh, more freely and not have to live with any, any problems. But it's... Uh, Masada? Uh, Masada. No, Masada. Yeah, but, um, Masada. In, Masada. Masada Indian food. I don't think it's Masala. Masada. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's amazing what you're pointing out, Masada. Masada. What you're pointing out, the ritualistic nature exists in all of these things. I mean, exactly. there's, you know, there's a level to it that's so esoteric, so esoteric, so hidden from all of us that is so ritualistic and unraveling the key to the ritualistic nature, I think, will also bring this mm -hmm. to light and maybe to an end, hopefully. Can I fill in a little bit more about the London thing? Because it's just... Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, go. It, was, it happened just uh, around the time for the G8 meeting. And they were meeting, and one of the things they were doing was discussing if they could uh, let some African countries get out of debt, you know. And also there was, I think, global warming. So, but instead, due to these things that happened there, suddenly the whole focus went on terrorism and, and so on, and the war on terror. So they got off the hook there, because that would have been humanitarian, and that's not what they want. So who was in the area when the bombs blew off? Well, uh, Rudolf, what's his name? Rudolf uh, Guriano, the former mayor of New York. Oh, New York. no, Giuliani. He, Giuliani, he yeah. was there at the very same hotel as Benjamin Netanyahu, and they, ben, Benjamin, the, right by the, the bomb that went off at the Tavistock uh, Square, uh, very, very close to that. And then uh, you had uh, Blair was there, and Bush 
those days. All of them were sort of like front seat. And the first bomb went off uh, 11 minutes to 9. 9, 11, nine, 11, nine, 11 nine, on 7, 7. You know, it's, it's these things, they just again, again, again. And it seems like there were multiple bombs, not just the ones that we've been told about, but and even more bo the trains blown up as yeah. well. It's like, and then you have the the bombers. Uh, do you remember the passport that was found? Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. In London, the same identification uh, ID was found in three different locations. Can you imagine? <laughs> he was blown to smithereens, and they were f found the same ID on three different locations. You don't want to. Well, you don't want to. Yeah. You don't want to make a mistake. You want to make sure somebody. <laughs> To and hire then no, a better autopsy, crew. no autopsy allowed. Of all course, the, yeah, no autopsy. I mean, more than 50, I think it was 52 dead people were not, the families were not allowed to find out why. Because the official story is that the bombs were made of, of black pepper and uh, some bleach uh, you bleach your hair with. And a pressure cooker, probably. Right. Something <laughs> like that, yeah. And, but the thing was that they found C4 residue in all the different situations, and then de de detonators really, really advanced. They and the holes they, were blown up, weren't they? they were, yeah, the, it was blown from up underneath the, this, uh, what do you call it? The floorboard. The floorboard, floor yeah. in, in the train station, in the wagon, wagons and so on. It's just a massive one again, and we have the same key people it's it's where's the library where's the, where, right. where was the news where's, where's the where library is, i i didn't realize it was tavistock square i mean talk about significant yeah yeah I, I don't think i had either i didn't either i didn't either know it was tavistock uh, this i love it when these they other need obvious to put things their pop signatures in, yeah. in there so they can take credit for it it's just yeah. a coincidence oh, they love the gloat don't they they do just they love do. that and it's like <laughs> yeah. but the, um, you know, as we're talking about the ritualistic stuff, you were saying yeah. that uh, the way they, they it's all drenched in this stuff. Well, think about it, even just the simple and you know the karma aspect. Even that the the whole formation of the military, you know how that removes conscience, mm -hmm. designed mechanized. Right. You will go. You will shoot. You will kill. You, you know, only good Germans are dead German. That kind right. of thing. You know, trouble is kids still have a conscience, but they try to beat it out of them. That's why the uniform, you know, the full uniforming, all that kind of stuff. But now it, they're still having a hard time. So now they put them on drugs. They put these sure. these headsets they use now. I don't know if you heard, but the the EMF bombardment that they put in these special soldiers is an aggravating one. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. Uh, um, Barry Trower talks about this. Uh, XMI six who you know, uncovered a lot of stuff about EMFs and cell phones being put on the same frequency as the human brain, which it didn't have to be. But um, these, these guys are getting their brains scrambled, not just on drugs, but... Sure. Back. And no wonder they 22 a day are killing themselves, and yeah. the government cons considers them potential terrorists because they, yeah, they're going to wake up and realize just how screwed they was. Their they were. programming could wear <clears throat> But anyway, that, that whole, the, the whole military thing is such a ritualistic occult blood drenched right. uh, yeah. ceremony it's just and yet they parade them out on football fields and basketball courts and right. on the wounded which then they send them home don't do anything for them that's right and they're, and they're the ones that are going to bear all the karmic debt I was listening to Mark uh, Passio and somebody asked him well how are all these bad guys like George H.W. Bush and you know don't they understand uh natural law don't you aren't they going to have to pay this this karma and he said no he says they haven't done anything they've signed a few pieces of paper who've done it are the yeah. guys following orders the guys with the ELF mm -hmm. in their heads it's mm -hmm. uh, it's it's horrible because they absolve themselves from guilt by warning people and then having somebody else do it so they're mm -hmm. pure as a driven snow but, and sometimes afterwards they say, oh, sorry, we were wrong. We made a mistake. Yeah. 
Oh, but I, I, I spoke to Chip about uh, George uh, Senior. Yeah. Because he worked directly under him, you know, for years. And uh, I said, I sure don't want to be, be Bruce Senior now because he, they say that he might even be dead before New Year, that he's really in a bad state. And I said, I don't want to be him when he has to knock on the door. Yeah. Who's opening? Right. And Chip said, I don't think that would be an issue because that's not where he's going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chip said, that's an evil dude for you. Yeah. yeah. Oof, oof. But I, can I just point one, one thing out? Yeah. Today is November 10th. Right. And tomorrow in Copenhagen, at the university in Copenhagen, there's going to be a drill. Uh, it's involving some 200 uh, um, crisis actors. They, they've asked students to uh, get involved. And 50 are there to be wounded. Uh, you can tick a box if you want to be wounded or just uh, one of the people running around. And the Swedish police will be the terrorists in this action. Now, at the very same day, there's another drill going on right outside the west coast of Denmark where the, the, the scenario is that it's a um, Russian uh, atomically, atomic uh, power, submarine? no, not submarine, but vessel mm -hmm. uh, with an atomic uh, engine mm -hmm. that is going to collide with a Danish freighter. And so they will tomorrow as well have this drill about an emergency, atomic uh, emergency, boom, disaster. And at the same time, tomorrow as well, it's Veterans Day in the U.S. And they love, you know, Boston bombing was on Patriots Day, all of these, uh, they love these things. Never mind, it's 11-11. It's 11-11. And there's a new moon. Remind me, it was 11-11, and it is 11-11. And also, there's a drill ending tomorrow with involving some 4,000 uh, soldiers from, from, I think, 19 different uh, nations some of them Danish, where they're testing out new laser beam weapons and stuff like that, that ends tomorrow at the exact same time as the drills are taking place and so on. So I just want to point out that this is recorded the day before. I've been doing everything I can to spread awareness of these things. I even have people going from Sweden to go and film the, the setup, they're, they're going to be there today filming them while they set up this oh, thing at the university. Yeah. And a great guy, he's a pensionist and he just said, I'll go. You know, it's just like, hallelujah, baby. Well, well done. So he's there and, and because the whole idea that I'm trying to, to get people to do is to go there and film the setup and make yeah. it very, very obvious that they're being observed, that they're being filmed, because these people act like really cockroaches, you know. You put the light, they disappear. <laughs> so right. put the light there and stop this. And also, sorry, I'm oh, really no. going for it here. No, but also like, uh, <laughs> but also Chip, what Chip says is that uh, every time we mess up their timeline, they're on a very tight timeline, because so many things are depending on that one thing is pulled off and then the next one. So every time we mess it up for them, it can take months for them to regroup, you know. So I say right. let's keep messing up. Yeah, baby. Well, you oh my know. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. You know, talk, talk about forewarning in the same thing, the same vein of thought. Look how um, uh, drills fall in that category, perhaps. Right. So they're putting a drill on, putting it in our consciousness. Right. You know, That's and yeah. and they're they're laying it out there like we're about to do this, even if they don't explain it. Right. It's, it's, we're going to do this, and they say, "Oh, and then and we'll just turn it." Okay, you were warned. Now turn it live, and uh, it's that creepy, is, you know. That is a really good way of seeing it because it's it fits into the same exact scenario. We How warned you. In fact, we 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 showed you our, we how we were setting up for it. That's true. That is exact. Do you know, like in at the 7-7 bombings in London, there was a drill going on yes. at the exact yeah. same time, exact same targets with everything exact going on. And it, there was like they said they had to go from slow thinking to fast thinking or fast acting or something like that. So Peter Power was one of the people very, I mean, we're talking top people 
in the government and all of it, totally involved in this whole thing. Totally, totally. And then with the Scotland Yard and all of these different people just, or, or organizations just covering the whole thing up. But uh, this thing with these drills, can, I, I just want to say another one, uh, because maybe you're not aware of it, but in Sweden it's very unusual with mass shootings and things. It, it has never happened, as far as I know. Because in Sweden you don't have a lot of weapons. So in Sweden, instead, they're, they're aiming for the knives. Uh, they're trying to get the knives away from people, you know. And then it will be the forks and the spoons. I think. Oh, pressure <laughs> cookers. Yeah. Pressure cookers. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So uh, about three weeks ago, the biggest drill, <laughs> one of the biggest drills ever in Sweden, uh, between the uh, ambulance, the fire brigade, and the Swedish police, were training a mass shooting in a school. Okay, it, it was on Swedish TV. It was there was this program called Crime of the Week, and they showed the whole drill Crime and the how, the week. how this whole thing was carried <laughs> out. And yes, this was good. No, this was not so good, and so on. Then one week later, uh, they went out in the news saying 190,000 uh, asylum, uh, what do you call them, immigrants, yeah. refugees are coming to Sweden. Oh. Freak you out, freak you out. They're really trying to freak people out in, in many countries. It's, and Sweden is not a, an exception. So uh, first you get the breakfast, the coffee. You, oh, my. <laughs> 190,000 coming this way. And then at a Swedish school in, in an area, it is, uh, they call it the lost town in, in Sweden, Trollhättan. It's, it's, a, it's a town with a lot of uh, mixed nationalities. It was where... The Volvo factory used to be, and then Volvo just was sold and given away from Sweden. Everything went down the drain in that town. Lots of minorities in that world. And then in that specific town, this young guy, lone crazy guy, with three names. They always have three names. Yeah, yeah. Lee Hunt, Oswald, yeah. James Earl Ray, and... Uh, Barack Hussein Obama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, <laughs> that is so spot on. But anyway, he, he went to the school. Apparently, uh, they say it was because of race. I don't know. And he was dressed like Darth Vader almost. He had a mask on, a helmet. I don't know if you've seen these uh, photos, dressed all in black. No. And, and he comes, he's, he doesn't talk to anyone, but uh, he has this music on, Halloween music, really weird. So two girls uh, take photos together with him because they think that he's just there to, for Halloween. And he has a sword and a knife. And then it's said that uh, a, a teacher, an assistant teacher approaches him and said, listen, you have to leave. And he stabs him with a sword. That is what it said. And then there's a, a, a black young student there that is, he also is said to have stabbed to death. And then he wounds another one. And then... Uh, the Swedish police comes, they're wee, 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 yeah. driving really fast, they run in, they fire two shots, one of them killing this young guy, he's only 21. Uh, by the way, his Facebook page was up, being updated after he died. <laughs> I, I noticed, I saw it myself, I didn't take uh, screenshots because I always do, I go straight to the place and just wait, 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 yes, there it is, being yeah. updated. <laughs> and then <laughs> Fantastic, you know, really makes you believe in, in reincarnation. Right. But, but then the, the, the whole thing is there's an ambulance coming and the ambulance crashes right into the wall because they say that the ambulance driver just fell sick and he just went straight into the wall. I would say maybe the guy that drove that wasn't really used to drive an ambulance. And uh, you know, so now there's this whole thing in Sweden going on about... Uh, uh, you know, immigrants and racism, oh, yeah. racism and the violence and, and all of this. And also, the parents of the dead uh, youngster, uh, the black kid, they were not allowed to see the body. Once again, we have this thing, you know. And, and no photos of the killed assassin, uh, of him without a mask, without anything, Instead, I found some different school photos where the proportions of the body and the, the, the head does not really match up. You know, his face right. is really long and it's like this and 
but it's the same hands, they're very similar the hands, and you know, it's just like, give me a break, I really need to rest, you know, it's, <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> you need to write a letter. Right. I know. <laughs> Eddie, you know, let, give me, I want to play music. That, give me a break. That's, that's, yeah, that's, we need some well, time off. Just get back into the studio, record, let's have a party. <laughs> you know, stop it, stop it. <laughs> it's too much and it's so crappily done. It's like no one can be proud of what they're doing at the moment. No. <laughs> well, how do you relate all this to the whole build up to September and everything that they were? planning to do that didn't seem to happen and yet I think a lot did happen there behind yeah, the but scenes. What happened was that the world is still here and their evil plan turned into a massive fight. It, there was it no no there was no structure to it. J Hill yeah. yeah. the financial system yeah. and they haven't got the power to pull it off. I, I really think we're diffusing it. That's what it feels I'm like. Trying to do everything I can to. Their deep gears are getting screwed with, not just from us, but there's other stuff at work, yeah. and I think it's really screwing up their system. It's it's just not working what they planned. I had a feeling nothing was going to happen in September, but it was really fun. No, we talked about that a lot. Yeah. All the stuff that was leading up, and oh wow! But then that, I, soon after, I wrote that article about. Uh, was it called Fruit Loops and, and Perilous Pitfalls? Right. And we're seeing it more and more. I mean, you saw this guy. Who's this guy? What's his name? Um, Fulford. Benjamin, ben Fulford. Benjamin, Benjamin Fulford. Yeah. He's, he's uh, November 5th. Did you read it? There was going to be nuclear bombs in the in the trench in the middle of the Atlantic, U.S. East Coast, European West Coast, gone. And da, 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 da. <clears throat> now there's a, there's other nine uh, the eleven eleven warnings for tomorrow, mm -hmm. and there's the people applying sure. scriptures to it and stuff like that. I don't I I think it's you know interesting to look for these things. What Ole shared has credibility because these are real events going on. on. It's not based on oh the you know the ninja right. The Ninja Turtles from the Chinese turtle farm are, are taking out the dark occult Illuminati serpents <laughs> right. as we speak. You know, it's, it, this is based on information. Yeah, but then again, are they real events? That's what I'm saying. Jade Helm, what happened to them? Was that a real event or was it just a massive threat to just freak us out? Uh, well, this is a good point. I'm actually starting to article on this. Yeah. right now, there's this massive big NATO exercise in Spain. I look outside. Not really. I oh. saw I saw ten troops. Oh yes, he did. He did indeed. Huh? Spanish troops lost in some small town, yeah. walking around. But there's a big story about NATO. Actually, there's a really good article about this. It's on my site right now about the NATO invades Spain. It's by Pepe Escobar. A really, really good slam. Is that Pablo's? He's always good. No. Yeah, he yeah. just he slices and dices. He takes takes it apart mm -hmm. for the foolishness. Because now NATO's going to take a stand in Spain, and they're building right. some big base supposedly in Moron, right. which is also pronounced Moron. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and, but this is a big. We've been talking about this. But so much stuff you hear. How how do you know what's true? How many how many migrants are really coming? Right. Who 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 says? Show me some pictures besides these packets of twenty people, you know, supposedly defecating on everything. Right. You know, I'm, I'm sure there's something going on, but when they tell us hundreds of thousands, it reminds me of another story that has to do with uh, somewhere in Germany and concentration camps and uh -huh. how six million, uh, six hundred million people, yeah. fifty fifty people turned into six hundred million by yeah. magic dust. <laughs> That's right. It's a, now they love six hundred million. Right. Millions of but they love this kind of hype, and actually, I just started an art article of hypertension, hypertension in, in the Imaginarium. But it, they love this. It, it's gotten to a point we cannot trust anything, mm -hmm. anything, anything, to the most profound level. You know, I mean, is that really Anderson, Anderson Scooper, 
and Anderson Cooper on the screen. Right. Never mind. Never mind the bullshit he's saying. Right. What is that? You That's know. Right. <laughs> right. Right. You know what I mean? That's the most fundamental level. And they, they make up anything they want. You, right. you know, we know their agenda is fear, division, turmoil, yeah, yes. control. So but they, they, people, and even the alternative community, we're guilty of running with things we hear. But wait a minute. It could just be BS, you know. Oh, right. did you hear so-and-so happen? Mm -hmm. Well, did it? But, you know? But that, that's <laughs> what I always write on Facebook and say, if true, yeah. then, because I have no idea... You know, we, we live where right now we uh, in the south of Spain. I mean, we can see Morocco here. If you if you read some newspapers, we are being totally bombarded by immigrants trying to know and, die, and people from Morocco and different African countries dying in boats on the way here. I have seen at, how many thousands have I seen? Hundreds. Uh, I would say more or less zero. <laughs> zero. <laughs> That is a zero, not a one. Zero yeah. immigrants here. You see, some there was in the newspapers a while ago. Two million Jews were allowed into Spain because of some six hundred years ago they used to have the rights for some uh, part of Spain, and now they're coming. Okay, I look out the window, have not seen one. I saw one Jew in, in Gibraltar the other day. That's about it. But this is. I tell you, they are playing us there. Like the, uh, yesterday, my, my sweetheart and I we were driving down, and she was all. Oh, you shouldn't tears. talk about me that way. <laughs> <laughs> Two guys with the bed in the background. <laughs> and she said uh, it was so awful. She listened to the news. It was the BBC News, mm -hmm. and they were uh, they were interviewing this woman on a Greek island. There was three hundred thousand uh, uh, refugees there. And, and people were dying in the hundreds, and there were two children that had just died uh, in her arms, more or less, when she was being interviewed. So she was almost crying. And so I said, excuse me, BBC, to start with, I would not trust as long as I can spit. Okay. As far as I can spit, you know, that's just the starter, because they're always there filling you with all of this thing. But with a very nice voice. I mean, they have beautiful voices that sound very convincing. And just because they're saying, they're insinuating this woman, saying what? What island? 300,000, where did they come from? That is a lot on a small island. I would That's a lot much, of boats. I yeah. would very much like to go to that island and check it out. So anyone who wants to finance me to an <laughs> island trip, I'll go there and I'll count them. You know, one one time, I just want to say, many years ago, I was in Saloniki, Thessaloniki, in the, in the north of Greece, and I was, uh, long story, but anyway, I couldn't leave because the police had taken my passport, and uh, so I, I just had to be there for a few days, and Papandreou and um, another politician called Mitsutakis, they had this big uh, rally uh, where they were going to speak in the in the evening and so on, and so Papa Andrea was not was not doing too good at that time, so I was like, oh, it's going to be very easy to see that nobody's going to turn up. Then I started seeing busloads and busloads and busloads coming from Bulgaria, which is just around the corner, it's just a uh, hundred kilometers up the road, with Bulgarians, and I saw them jump out of the bus, being handed these big, uh, uh, you know, like signs. Right. In saying, I'm sure something pro Papandreou. I was like, they're not Greeks. Why are they here? <laughs> and then the whole, all of these buses were coming, dumping all of these people. And in the evening, I got photos. There are millions of people supporting Papandreou in that square. I mean, it was packed. How many were Bulgarians? And how many were paid? They were really poor at that time, the Bulgarians. Pay the little chup 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 and in comes top on the air again. Illusion. Looking yeah. at illusions. And, and it's, like, it's like those pictures, you, those famous pictures you see Hillary or one of these puppets standing in an auditorium, um, you know, talking, supposedly talking to a group, and they put people behind them. I mean, come on. You know, of course, black, white, woman, sure. transgender, whatever. Yeah. And they're just sitting there behind. And then the, remember, a few of them, they panned back, 
there's nobody there. It's just the whole thing is it's just completely totally staged. staged. Just cameras. <laughs> People get a shot from back. <laughs> it's such bullshit. But it's also have you seen that when they they walk on stage and then they point to someone in, yeah. the, in the audience going like this. Uh -huh. Pointed at. I didn't know the guy who pointed at me. No, it's good. just to say, oh, I'm a, I'm a popular guy. Look, I got friends. Hey, <laughs> like that. And well, all these gestures have powerful meaning. Right. It's almost a different level of, of deception here, where you can't believe anything. You turn on yeah. the TV. I mean, even the things that come in through YouTube, you know, uh, Dabu 7 or Professor yeah. Doom or those things. You don't know where they're coming yeah, from. Yeah, that's your doom. <laughs> <laughs> but that is why I'm not part of a group. I'm only part of the Zen fan club. That's the only <laughs> organization. I mean, otherwise than that, because I have no idea what's going on. You know, I'm just trying to figure this out the way, the best way I can, because there's so much. And these organizations, they've got a lot of money. You know, <laughs> yeah. Up in False, false information. It's all image. Right it's all image. It's just image. Imagination. That's it's a nation of images. Yeah. Right. Imaginary. Right. It's, it's to such an extent now. It's it's almost like you're on acid all day long. It's just what is real, what isn't. Right. You know, our, our friend Willem uh, Federhoff. He he's the um, ex KLM pilot whistleblower who. Uh, um, He's been speaking about chemtrails, mm -hmm. and uh, he's been doing. He's done a lot of research about what actually happened in Yugoslavia during the wars with Croatia and and Serbia. Mm -hmm. They claimed a big part of that war that justified the war was that they they claimed eight thousand Muslims were massacred in Croatia, and he knows for a fact that nothing happened. There was no no such thing. Oh, it was man. all propaganda, just like you know, the the the. The sinking of the ship off of Vietnam and the whole thing, that never happened, and that uh, it's that wasn't very well publicized, or I, maybe I just wasn't uh, that awake back then when this was news in the West. It's massive news, <clears throat> but it's huge news for Holland because in Holland they're the ones that help support this early thing. But he was a pilot going back and forth, and he knows for a fact that uh, he was flying in soldiers, and the soldiers told him what was going on, what what wasn't going on. <coughs> that was all pure hoax. Actually, we, we put that story up on our website, too. You can find that either today or yesterday's news. But uh, it's, it's, there's so many things like this we find out. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing is we're finding out. And that, this is one of the best things about the awakening. Right. It, you know, it's an archaeology, science. Right. You know, science mar married, marrying consciousness. I mean, there's freaking wonderful things happening. It is you amazing. Know, finding pyramids under the ocean and... You know, new fossils that don't fit in anything, and you know, par paradigms are getting blown right and left, and that's that's really cool. That is cool. That's it's fun. A fun process. That's fun, and that's what that's. You know, if you want to sell the awakening, that's how I always think. It's so cool yeah. to sit with four people that are awake. We don't quite. Well, that couldn't be. Well, you know, I disagree with that. Well, what? <laughs> No, we're, we're just open. We, we realize we've been so incredibly deceived all the time that we're just opening it. We're becoming like like uh, empty vessels, you know, because we don't know. It's a process of learning by unlearning. Yeah, it that's is. exactly right. It's so, and you may quote me on that. Yeah. <laughs> it's so... I quoted him a couple times on the on the website. I said, he said that I wrote it down and I put it up as today's quote. I'm going to carve it on a rock in the back here. I've, I've never been quoted before. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about time that we had people to boost up our confidence, right? After years of oh, being the, told we're absolutely nuts, nuts and bonkers and full yeah. of shit and... It is so important, you know that? It's yeah. so true. It really is. We talk about that all the time because you don't, it's it's rare, it's few and far between. I mean, there's people varying degrees of being awake, but yeah. when you find that real kindred, yeah, you know, and, 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 and you know them, to me, they're able to laugh at everything. It's, 
it's a joke. We're a joke. I mean, mm-hmm. who the hell is, is anybody to, to know anything almost, you know? And we, we're, we're trying to get through it, but it's like we're getting younger and more childlike all the time. Yes. And goofing around, making mud pies and throwing them at each other. We just want to goof off and have fun. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just sort of we're getting younger and younger and younger. Yes. <laughs> but it's also you would think that maybe Sam and I would only be speaking about these things when we meet. Absolutely not. Right. He just yeah. talks conspiracy, but I try to change the subject. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we don't talk about this stuff. Right. I know. I think yeah. that people who are newly awakening think yeah. that it's all about fear and the next catastrophe around the corner. And I don't think they understand how much fun we're actually having becoming more and more free from this yeah. matrix system and seeing the humor in things you know, not sitting in a corner, you know, terrified of what's coming next. Although, I must admit, it is fun, like, looking at what the next catastrophe is around the corner, because, you know, meanwhile knowing there's so little likelihood that it'll be pulled off. But, but anything is possible. It's a yeah. very real reality. Mm-hmm. You know, to have a sense of humor is not to say these things aren't real. No. Right. They're capable of nasty stuff. We're intensely aware of it. Maybe that's one another reason we enjoy the moment because that's all you got, and who knows what's yeah, around the corner. True. But that, but that's another beautiful thing too with, that comes with commitment. When you've given all, like we Oli and I know, we could be taken out at any time. You know, the more stuff you publish, that's controversial. Mm-hmm. And this guy, especially, he just walks into the lion's den, smiles. You know, he's yeah. fearless. He's just mm-hmm. he's. He's got a, a love bit, you know? bubble shielding him from <laughs> yeah. any danger. No, he does. He's got a, he's, he's super gifted. And he's just, he, it's, that's the thing about courage. It's simple fearlessness. It's not like, I shall go in and conquer the territory right. now. You know? Right. It, it's, it's a fearlessness. It's a, and it, but that comes from knowledge. But it also comes from commitment. Like, I'd rather live like this and get taken out and die happy than hide in the corner trying to save my own ass. Mm-hmm. You know? And I, I, we, we did smart things. He got to Spain, and I moved down to South America. We you know why just sit in the line of fire? We'd rather live and, you know, he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. Right. Mm-hmm. The thing, you know, I'd rather keep going and keep being a being a, a pain in the ass to the powers that be and helping people. But if if it comes to if, if this costs my life, so called, uh, hallelujah. <laughs> but, but I think that's where fearlessness comes from when you when you're willing to pay the price. You know the game, you know the, what you're up against, or I don't know, I mean, it's shit scary from time to time, that's for sure. Right. But, but once you accept that that is a part of it, and you still choose to go that way, then at least that lets me free of fear. And Mothers do it in a heartbeat if their child's in front of a bus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Father, fathers will run in the building, a burning building at the that's tumbling down to save their child. It's, it's in all of us to have, be that responsible. Mm-hmm. And if humanity would freaking rise up and get to that point, which, which is one of the reasons I think that this crumbling down of everything that is happening in slow motion, as some people say, um, mm-hmm. like, like, like coup d'etat. Coup d'etat. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, it's working against them because it's putting the pressure on and then people are forced to make some gut decisions about their lives. How important it is that they run back and get your junk out of your storage unit, right. for God's sake. Mm-hmm. You know, what is important to you? And you know, people start evaluating. They wouldn't evaluate otherwise if the pressure wasn't put on. Right. Mm-hmm. He only put the light on himself. I, I see you better. You're a little more lit up. Thanks. I, Getting dark in know. Spain? No, I've got stereo lights. <laughs> I, feel like I'm, I feel like I'm in the dressing room. <laughs> but you know, people keep saying, but when will the, the, the masses wake up? When, you know, how many? But the way I see it is, if you look at the Hoover Dam, you got all that water blocked off. They have been blocking us for such a long time on all different. But there are these masses behind it. So the thing to do is just focus on one point like a laser, I mean, I, I focus on a very small but important area mm-hmm. and just keep keep knocking. And the cracks are coming there. 
And uh -huh. I tell you, once the cracks start opening up, it will just go vroom in one go. And that will just be... That's right. That's right. That'll cure the California it's drought. 2015. That's right. <laughs> It'll all be gone. You know, it looked like something like that was starting. It looks like a lot of the Middle Eastern countries are wanting some alliance with Russia now. Iraq wants them to come in and solve their ISIS problem. Jordan is allowing them to use their airspace. And I'm imagining that, you know, that could happen all over the world. I mean, Ireland could say, screw NATO. We want to help Russia. I mean, it yeah, that, could, that the dam could break. Right. Yeah, same with stepping out of the EU and, you know, dumping the dollar. China, you know, China's right. now negotiating with Yuan now with, uh, who is it? Who's in the news today? With... Uh, with India or somebody, but the, they're bypassing the dollar. All these things are the like the oh, I said the cracks in the dam. Right. So you don't know, but we don't. I mean, just be. I just don't like when people just sit around waiting for things to happen. That's just not acceptable. Mm -hmm. That's just not acceptable. But um, they can contribute in any way they you know sharing information. The cool thing, so many people are. I I, mean, I know a lot of people that. They'd have a Facebook page or they have an email list. Mm -hmm. When they get something hot, they they send it out. Right. And that's how I started. Mm -hmm. I started doing that. I was going, holy shit, and sending stuff out to people. And then my son, who's a web designer, he said, "Dad, what are you doing? Why don't you start a blog?" Mm -hmm. I right. Said, oh, what's, a, what's what's a blog? <laughs> right. <laughs> no. <laughs> but the, but that's how. But anybody, you know, that's why I say anybody can do it. Everybody should do it. Mm -hmm. that, that's the. You know, we can, well, we can all do what we do. You guys sitting in the hinterland of, of Ecuador. In the mountains, yeah. In the mountains there, yeah. And you're, yeah. you're reaching, you know, scads of people, mm -hmm. sharing amazingly enlightening information, talking to whack jobs over in Spain. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we have fun. It's, a, it's <laughs> a very blessed life. We're having a blast yeah. doing it, and we feel yeah. like we're actually, you know, maybe helping a few people in whatever way we can, spreading the information. I love that about what's happening now. It's like just yeah. anybody, they don't have to have any prior experience at all, can participate in sharing this information with each other through emails, through little blogs, through making videos. It's so cool to see all the people on the on the internet, on YouTube, you know, just getting stuff out and... Yeah, it's, it's, well said. Look at people, even the most practical advice. Like there's a mom who learned a, a canning recipe from her grandmother. You right. know, and she goes, and she starts getting into, you know, pre preparedness and stuff. She goes, I've been there, she's researching, she says, nobody knows my mom's recipe. You know, and she she's never been out there. It's uh -huh. a big deal for people to put themselves yeah. in the public arena, you know? It's a big deal. Yeah. And, uh, and she puts it out there, and all of a sudden, you know, next thing you know, she's Daisy Luther or somebody, you know? Right. Like, that's how it happens. It right. It's just so cool. And the fact that we have that platform, I mean... And it I mean, doesn't we, have to we be, be slicked what we're up. Doing, but, doesn't but have to I be think. professional or slicked up. I mean, it's just however you can spread any kind of information... It works. I tell you, Cindy, I, I built like a really super duper studio in our apartment. <laughs> I did the first 30, 40 interviews like that. It was our toilet. It was, a, <laughs> it was a one time square, two square meters or something like that. And many times I just had the computer on the toilet. I had a chair in front. I could hardly close the door. Mm -hmm. And then blanket on top of me so there would be no echo really on the cover yeah. but but that's you know not having an idea if anything of this came out or how, if anyone was listening I was just doing everything I could to to and now respond you responded yeah. a, only on the toilet podcast that would be a great <laughs> one you could start it up again <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, no, I was told, please have a blanket because the sound is not too good. <laughs> and at the end of the show, he'd flush it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, 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 that. That was Studio <laughs> One, and that Studio Two was in our bedroom because mm -hmm. I didn't want to just But, that, you know, whatever. Whatever, exactly. Whatever it takes. Well, we got a green screen. 
get yeah. notice? Check it out. I it's inspired by you guys because you yeah. had black screens. <laughs> ah. Both of you had black uh, well, screens. Well, <laughs> um, we put the plant there because we, we, don't, we don't have the green screen technology yet. We just, just have green, the green screen. Just the green cloth. <laughs> yeah. But it'll come, you know. No, but there's a friend of mine moving down here in a month or so who's a specialist in green screen. I'll put you in touch. Good. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Good. Richard, I think, did you tell him about Richard? Richard. guy named Richard Williams that I write you about him? Yes, and he sent us a I lovely note on one of our... He wants, to, he wants to move here too, yeah. Good, oh That's no, nice. you're all migrating to Spain. Are you leaving Uruguay for Spain? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, at the very least, we're going to spend a lot of time here next year because I'm getting invited to more... Conferences and great, stuff that's really great. cost prohibitive to bring people all the way from Uruguay. Yes. So, and plus, uh, we've got our dear friends here, a lot of stuff happening. Perfect. So, and everything, everything's closer and it's, it's electric. Mm -hmm. But on, that, on the same token, Europe's getting, you know, economically, there a lot of controls. You feel the difference. But it's actually less expensive to live here than it is in Uruguay. No way. Wow, wow, that's. That's good to Which know. Which is a factor for us because we're just, you know, going by donations. Right. But, uh, you know, we're universe guides. Mm -hmm. That's right. Just be open. You have to be open yeah. to follow. Yeah, it's yeah. such a treat to have you both in one place and see you together. Two it of our for very me. favorite people. And yeah. I'm sure that's true <laughs> for, for many right. of our viewers. Yeah, nice treat for all of us. It's just like sitting in a room all together. This is Isn't so it? cool. Yeah. Yeah, Skype's wonderful. Definitely. I so. love your green screen. That's very high tech. It's green. Yeah, it's green. green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can say, yeah, you can say you've got green screen. Yeah, well, the, green screen. the next thing is, <laughs> what kind of image do you want back there? And we can't decide. Right, What's right. that again? Well, what kind of image? I mean, uh, do we want a newsroom? No. Do we want a cliff? Oh, yeah. Do we want, you know, what? You know, a waterfall? Cool. You know, what exactly? Yeah. Looks good right here. Richard, what's your arms? Pardon me? Yeah. Richard Williams will sort your arms. Oh, all right. Perfect. 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 Yes, a spinning circle is like a spiral. Like, oh, no. What do they call me, those? Listen to me. Listen to me. Sigils. <laughs> One time we were talking about the. Uh, when they do these things, my, uh, Mike Williams, uh, the host on, on Sage of Choir. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about these things, and he said that one of the ways to get you into a trance is as these circling... Uh, right. Uh, no, cubes. They uh, call them sigils. Yeah, sigils. Going around, yeah. going around, and then if you want to go emotional, then red, otherwise blue, and then a text ticker text at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I tell you, when this... Uh, when this uh, so-called terror event just happened in, in Sweden, where this guy was stabbed, uh, the teacher and so on, uh, when, they, when the news were talking about him in the background, while the sound of whoever they were into you was there, there was this red background and then a circular thing rotating. And then there was something that looked like it was flying, uh, you know, like at the equator type right. thing. And it's a pyramid, but it was made to look like an arrow. But I tell you, it sure was a pyramid. So you had this red thing while they were talking about this lone crazy guy, mad, mm -hmm. mad, mad, terror, terror, terror. And in the background, this thing, and then with a white pyramid just circling. It's all magic. It's all magic and mind control and programming. Mm -hmm. It's just... Mm -hmm. True. Uh, you know, and it, but it ceases to work when you recognize that that's what it is. So that's a really that's good right. thing to expose, you know, to get people used to watching for those subtle things that are usually in the background and how they're actually affecting us as mm -hmm. we're exposed to them. Right. You break the spell by seeing it. Yeah. That's exactly true. And so you're in a living in a household where you're awakening and you're breaking the spell. And you're aware of all this and it's not affecting you. But your wife or your husband, the You're spell dead. isn't broken. They're in, they're in the magic land. We've run into that so much within the last three or four months. Actually, we have a, uh, a daughter-in-law who's waking up. 
Mm, wonderful. And uh, it is exciting. It's it's, a, it's so I mean, fun. Well, the we experience. Uh, well, there's very few people we've seen before and after their awakening during the awakening process. Yeah. And we're running into them now, and they are invariably in a relationship with someone who isn't coming along. And so that seems to be the crisis right now. Finding out what's true, and then also, how do you live with people that are in another universe? Exactly. Well, well can I say without uh, boosting my own ego too much, my approach has been very helpful for spouses uh, because I come not from hate or anger or fear or conspiracy theories or anything like that, and but from the angle of forgiveness, compassion, and fearless exposure. So some people have had, you know, they felt very alone with this, and then they put them the spouse by accident in front of one of these, uh, like the Norway thing or something, right. where there's discussion, where there's no, yeah, it's just these theories, yeah, it's like, that. it's just like facts, boom, 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 but without the, the, the fear punch. Right. There's this uh, beautiful uh, lady in, in Arizona, and she was, she's been awake for years, and she was felt so alone, and then one day, uh, she has been fantastic for me, you know, one of the few, the few in the beginning that really stood, stood by my side, you know, just by supporting him, what I was trying to do. And uh, so one day they were driving from Arizona to Phoenix, or no, sorry, I guess in Arizona, but somewhere, and she just popped in one of my talks in the radio without telling him, and he just got totally fascinated. And he, he was really fired up afterwards, and he did not say anything of these two hours or two and a half hours. And then he was like, oh my God, this is a dealer. And then she said, well, that's the guy I told you about. You know, to do it in a, in a gentle way, yeah. not force it on people, you cannot, they need to open the door from the inside. You cannot kick it in. Mm -hmm. And this is what most people that sort of awake feel that they... they People around them are just like, oh God, shut up, shut yeah. up. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to see the whole world is black, black, black everywhere. So if you can come from the light point of view, then it's a lot easier. That's true. That's true. Well, you're a wonderful tool then because you're so full of love and you can explain things in a way that never invoke fear, which is really beautiful. So well, we should get some Oli tapes and send them around. Yeah, we should. <laughs> Your first tape with uh, interview with Red Ice Radio, I listened to it twice through the whole thing, and it's a long one, two and a half hours or something. But it was full of facts and right on, and you weren't pushing your 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 point of view. You were just describing it, and it was getting deeper and deeper, and de it was really fascinating. That might have been the one that that woke that guy up. But that's amazing. And then... Every single one that opens up, like, I mean, it's like a flower in a desert, isn't it? You're just like, mm -hmm. whoa. Yeah. It is a beautiful it, thing to see. Because it is, it is very scary for most people to start opening up their eyes because it's like, what can you hold on to? It's like, shit, everything. Everything right. I've been told turns out to be, this is not the way I've, I thought. It is a. It's how deep down on the rabbit hole do you want to go? Yeah, that's that right. is the one that's to right. swallow it. Like that's right. Uh, and then there's, no and then there's the next step, which is envisioning what comes next when we're rid of the virus, you know, that's infecting the earth, and we can create this beautiful world we want to live in. I think we need to develop our ability to imagine beautiful scenarios and yeah. how we go forward. And, and, and also, sorry, no, and also focus on, okay, so now we've transcended this thing, this obstacle called the new world. I mean, that was it. So now what? Just like send, I don't know if you've seen this video, it's incredible. I think it is called Now I'm Awake. So, so, you, so you woke up. Now. So you woke up. Now what? It is incredibly beautiful. And with uh, 
one of Sen's friends with a very deep voice, Snortster. Snortster. Yeah. What's, the name? For... What's the name of it now? Now we're. So you're waiting. woken up. Now what? Okay, I'm yeah, going to look You'll find the... it in YouTube. It's amazing. But to focus on, okay, fine, we transcended this, now what? Now it's up to us, how are we going to do this? Mm -hmm. Can we? Are we going to mess it up again? Are we going to get worse than they are? They were? Or how are we going to do it? To focus on these things. Exactly. That's important. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important, that, like you're saying, about how the information is offered. Because people have, I know for me, that things that... Anything that came at me hard, you tend to. You know, yeah, yeah. But when it's just put there, and you know, just, just it's up to you to, right. uh, which is how learning is supposed to be. Right. You know, instead of this crammed down, mm -hmm. freeze dried BS that they uh, call education today. <laughs> but uh, it's making it, offering it, mm -hmm. and also kind of feeling out for the right uh, avenue to come in, the right vector, because very often people where people don't disagree usually is on healthy eating, nutrition, yeah. you know, and then, then it le invariably leads to GMOs, fluoride, the vaccines, you know, and then it gets deeper and you realize the CDC and the FDA and all these guys, well, it looks like, you know, maybe they're not working for us. Right. And then, mm -hmm. you know, next thing you know, they're into the Fed and they're into the they might leapfrog right into the Illuminati. You know? Right. <laughs> but you know what I mean? When it happens, it happens. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. You ever cut into a golf ball? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. It's kind of like that. That's a good analogy. And then you, you know become and then you become a junkie. I, uh, Mindy's always saying we need something else. We need to kick out another jam. We need to, you know, we're looking for things that. You know, yeah. always exposing or yeah. uh, Sharon Tate. I remember when we found out that that was just a hoax. I know. You know? Give me more. A, Give me more. I want to know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So I'll tell you one thing that is a bit different. Um, people are always looking for a leader. Yeah, but who's going to lead us? Who's going to step up and lead and lead? And I... I've seen some beautiful things lately about natural horsemanship. You know, like you have the Spanish way where you control the horse. Yeah. And many people here, if they don't, if the horse or donkey don't do what it's supposed to be, you just hit it and then it will move. No, but you don't. I'm not talking about beating. I'm talking about control by pain. Yeah. Or control, the control thing. Yeah, the system paradigm. And, and here, when we look at the world, it's all a matter of control, control, control. So when people say, who will be the next leader, who can control us, they're indirectly asking for. And some people have said that I'm a supreme leader. I totally disagree because in a group, I'm useless. I, I cannot make people agree on where to go or what pizza to buy, whatever. No, I'm not that person. I go more quiet. But I do understand what it is they're talking about because what they're talking about, at least the way I see it, is that a peaceful mind is contagious. Uh -huh. and, and when you look at, at uh, nat you may, a natural horsemanship where uh, the horse is, once you get its confidence, it's looking to be led. You know, it does not like the responsibility one, the one leading but it don't want to be taken for a ride either or see you as a predator or so on. But if you can get its trust and it feels the, the, the power of your mind, it, it, they're very, if you're nervous, it gets nervous. If you're angry, it gets angry. If you want to fight it, it will fight you. If you're peaceful, it can relax. And once the horse is totally relaxed, it will just follow you. It's amazing to watch. And I've seen like people... Uh, we had a, one guy here today, he was controlling the horse without reins, without everything, just by his body movement and breath. He blew and the horse turned around. He blew in the other direction and the horse went that way. I was just like, I love it. That's I good. love it. That's the way to do it, I think, you know, mm -hmm. to a new, totally new way of leadership, just like the native Indians, 
where the old were the wise, they were not the loudest, right. but they were the ones with the wisdom. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted wisdom, you would go there. If you wanted to go out and get yourself killed, you would just go out and be a stupid uh, son of a gun. So it's uh, that type of wisdom, that type of leadership, where there is no leader, but it's the, the peace itself that is leading. I, I, I hope well, it's a deep, a deep energetic knowing. and Because uh, he was explaining this, this to me earlier today. It, he, he, this this, this uh, amazing man, he controls the horse from the back of the horse by his hips and his shoulders. And just at the, if he touches the rein, it's just the slightest bit. Right? Yeah, but it's, no, but, it's, but, it's, but it's from the driving. It's almost like, you know, the, the lower chakras. And, uh, and the horse just, I mean, he, he, could wave his, he could wave his hand and breathe, and the horse would turn all the way around. Right. Do you know, I mean, like, I, I was sat there for 20 minutes on, on the back of this horse, just trying to get it to move without moving. Mm -hmm. The whole idea was to win where I looked and my intention, my focus, and my breath. From low down, you know, move that way, the horse did not move. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole idea was not to get frustrated or irritated or start kicking it, because like he said, if you kick the horse now, very easy, it will move, but then you set the, you set the, the level of where you can meet, and that will be through friction. So it's just the matter of sit and until, and in the end, the horse moved. I think it, maybe it was a fly or something, but in the end it moved. <laughs> and it was just really beautiful to, to watch. And I just felt, th this is the way to do it. I'm, I, I feel that I'm onto something very important that I can't really <laughs> describe. Yeah, it's very Zen, actually. This is it a is Zen concept. Zen. Like Zen archery. Like Zen yeah. gardener. <laughs> Then archery, you just, just read about it and you go, how long it takes for people to learn to not, you have a think and, and shoot. Yeah, but do you know Kido, which was the Japanese mm. way of doing it? They did not look at the target. They were looking that way and just with a focus, aiming, and I mean, they could hit birds, flying birds, in it, which they did not do, but flying objects. Right. <laughs> you know, it's... it's it's a very different way of doing it. This is our, this is the territory that, this is our new frontier. Yeah. This is a this great is where, new frontier. This, I mean, it's perfect. This is where we need to, this is where we need to grow. Yes. This is where telepathy is going to come in. Mm -hmm. Telepathy, new modes of communication, trust, mm -hmm. um, peace, like you say, which will be the quote on my website tomorrow. Yes. And now, I'm going to tell you the story of a horse called Apache. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can I tell you this book about a horse called Apache? I've always loved the Apache tribe and the, 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 the Sioux tribe and the Apaches, one of the, the ones that have been close to my heart. And in Denmark, I have a friend who's a horse whisperer. And uh, uh, when I went to the open mind, he said, come and stay with us. So I went there and he had four horses. And I've never been really a horse person before, but I've always been fascinated about how the communication goes on and how, how do you do it. So when I came there and I saw on their wine glasses that they had the names of the horses and one of them were Apache. Mm -hmm. And I got that glass. I was like, yay. Yes. And I, Please, can I say hello to Apache together with you and just see when you talk to him and, and uh, you know, see see what happens. He said, yeah, for sure. His name is Bjarne. And he says, yeah, for sure. So we went out there. This Apache horse, it's really big. It's a big, big white horse. And uh, I was barefoot. And when, when the horse came, it was quite sort of uh, not rough, not aggressive anyway, but he was like pushing me around a little bit. I actually had this jump around. And after a few minutes, it was all green from the grass. You know, he was sort of pulling and yeah. like that. <laughs> but, uh, but I was just standing there, a little aware of that he wouldn't step on me. But otherwise than that, I just thought it was a magnificent horse. And so uh, Bjarne said, would you like to ask him something? And I was like, ask? Yeah. yeah, why not? So, yeah. so Bjarne said, just repeat the question in your head. Uh, keep repeating it. So I didn't tell Bjarne the question. My question at that time was that I was burning myself out because I was just, everything I did 
in this area was for free. I was uh, giving away, people could download everything for free. Everything was for free. And the energy was just going out. And I was financially on my knees at the same time with a family to support. And it was just burning my, it was burning me out. So my question was how, how, how can I take a next step to get in balance here? Did not tell Bjarne the question. And then Bjarne said, Apache says, you need to update your website. <laughs> you need to uh, start the newsletter. And Bjarne doesn't know about websites either. I mean, he had no idea, as far as I know. And you need to open up so that there can be an exchange of energy, you know, so that people can support you. Because it's too much now. You're, you're just, it's, the energy is go just going one way. There's no flow in, out. There's no flow. You need to open up avenues um, for that. And he right. gave me some more details about my website. I was like, am I being advised by a horse? Wow. Yeah. So I, but I, I was listening. I was, and while I was getting this advice, the horse was totally still with the head down and ears back like this, totally not moving at all. And then Apache said, uh, uh, a few few minutes later, he said, now we're in touch. Everything, anything you want to ask, just think my name, put out the question, I'll help you. And then, brr, the horse trot off. I was like, whoa. That's and so I've been, beautiful. I've, I've gone back to the same horse with Judith Mary Baker, Lee Harvey Oswald's girlfriend, mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the this incredible woman who's doing everything to to clear his name. Apache gave him her incredible advice, and then the day after, Ken O'Keefe came there as well. And as far as I know, it was like a life-changing experience for him, uh, as far as I've been told. So I'm saying it's we're talking about information coming through on different areas. I'm not saying that it's the horse that have been studying HTML coding. Right. I would think not. But it's coming through in different ways mm -hmm. from the library that is in the universe That's around right. us. It's just really interesting to tap into these areas. It is. And I tell you, I went straight back and I did these things with the websites that I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And it's worked out a lot better since then. It's a beautiful change. I, I, know, I went on and saw it just the other day. It's beautiful. You did a lovely job with it. I just love that information can come from the least expected sources. You know, I mean, it's available if we're open to reaching out for it. That's cool. There's an English guy, I think his website is Trust Techniques, an English guy who's just, he sits with the horses. These horses, there's some videos around where he's just sat, he, he just empties his head, he's just sitting there doing nothing. And when the horses, these were very abused horses uh, that were in these videos, when they feel his calm, his, his, the calm of his mind, they just start lying down next to him. And there's, he's like in a field with 10 or 15 horses, and they just drop around him like boom. And then the next one just lies down totally relaxed, like on a, at a spa. And then the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And it's amazing to see, absolutely incredible to see. Wow. I love hearing that. And that then also, if I can run on for a little bit, when you see him, I know, him, <laughs> when he, he, starts, he starts walking around and he runs and all of these horses are following him. What wow. are they following? They're following the peaceful, the peace. That's what they're following, just like they were following Gandhi. Mm -hmm. Here in this mayhem of India, where total chaos is everywhere, and poverty and problems and everything, and there's a peaceful mind that said, you can relax. There is a way to relax and, and feel good. And even though he was running around in a diaper and only had a stick, no funding, no nothing, no title, no nothing, that was the way to go. That's the way to go. Peace is the way. Love is the way. It is. It is. And also, I remember years ago, Paul, telling me, you can only really raise your, you know, expand your consciousness and grow that way in a state of total relaxation. 
which is something that is extremely hard to find now in these mm -hmm. times. Everything is working against that. And so I think that's a big, big key. That state of relaxation where we're open and empty mm -hmm. is where we can learn and grow. It's funny, too, because conviction brings peace. There's, yes. you know, it's the wholeness that brings peace. Because each of us have a, have a different calling. Mm -hmm. Most people think of peace as a guy who retreats. Right. And finds peace in the mountains. In a, I mean, there's a, there's a place for that, clearly. I mean, I wish that had been my calling in a way. Right. <laughs> It'd be a lot simpler, maybe. Maybe not. But... Uh, there's, it, it's almost like a, I think there's a Bible verse that says you have to labor into that rest. Did you ever hear that? You're familiar with it. Sounds like we will. You have, to get, you, have to, you have to get to the place where you can rest almost. There, there's, a, there's a process to get to peace. Mm -hmm. It's not just letting go wherever you are right. necessarily. Because right. there's things, there's deeper issues to, to that uh, sometimes need addressing first. Because, you know, when you really just get quiet, there's things come up in your subconscious right. and all kinds of stuff. Well, it so people with these technologies, like this like this horse right. thing, I mean, you were there, with, well, you weren't there when uh, Luis was there. Mm -hmm. Luis uh, went there with uh, on a recent trip after his original visit, right? Can yeah. yeah. And apparently the horse said, I'm supposed to go there. You should go. You should go. My goodness. I, I want to go, too. Patsy said I'm supposed to go there. Good. Yeah. Go see him. I'm going to go. Ask him for me. You know, tell him I can't come in person, but just, you know, can he? No, but maybe ask the question inside him. Let's see if it comes up. All right. Maybe he'll give you the answer while you're there. I'll ask. Let me know yeah, before you I'll, go. Press, so I... I'll, do, I'll do some horse channeling for you. Okay. Yeah. I'd love that. Uh, do you know my, my sweetheart, right. Kim? Uh, she she felt a while ago that uh, you know I want to do something as well something that can make a difference. So she she's made a book project where she's uh, uh, interviewed eight different people, brilliant minds, mm -hmm. brilliant minds. <laughs> she's interviewed David Ike, Ken O'Keefe, Cynthia McKinney, Mr. Sam Gardner, Oli Donegal. Uh, Sophia Smallstorm, uh, Carrie Cassidy, Carrie Cassidy, and she comes from a point of very simple question, like uh, questions from ordinary people, mm -hmm. not looking down. I'm just saying right. people that are not into this area and are sort of having these questions, like what the hell is going on, and the same 15 questions to these. Uh, what, what what can I do about it? Yeah. Right. Um, how would you describe? Very simple questions from. From the perspective of a wife, yeah. of a researcher, mm -hmm. who is not as deep into it all as he is, and the, the, you know, and I mean, it's it, it's been amazing the process, how it's worked on her at the same time. It's just amazing because she's talked to these people and seen these questions addressed, and all these different ways. We haven't seen the full compilation yet, but I have. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> the book is uh, the title of the book is uh, called uh, "So What Can I Do." You know, so mm -hmm. right. But anyway, one of the questions is: Do you have any uh, any ways of keeping your your spirit high? She asked all of these. Yeah, questions. good question. My answer to that was uh, that when the sun starts going down here, we often go out. We have a couple of chairs. Senna's been joining us. We just watch the sunset, and we're sitting there with one duck and five chickens <laughs> and a horse. And a horse, no duck. and just no the the chicks. Uh, some of them you can you can stroke, uh -huh. and uh, mm -hmm. you know, like really cute. He calls it the chicken meditation time. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, we and have just this. Uh, what, what, when you sit there, it's just like uh, it calms you down. It does not need to be any high tech, high tech, uh, super duper a uh, technique that is called anything. You just sit there, yeah, and enjoy, you know, and and. Uh, also, just by at least when I when I feed the chicken, I really like to sit down just with them, you know, mm -hmm. not share their food really because they're sharing mine because they get left over. <laughs> right. Just to be to be there, and it's sort of it just it just calms you down, it calms me down at least. Well, it, it's because he's barefoot in the chicken shit. 
Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is a nature man. That's reality. So, I totally understand what you're saying because we are into chicken consciousness too, and I and it does it does calm you down. We used to have our tea every morning in watching the chickens interact with each other, but any time I feel at all not at ease, I take a chair over by the chicken yard and sit and just being in their consciousness. There you go, chicken consciousness. That's yeah. gonna it's that's cool. gonna catch on. <laughs> This thing with chicken shit is so not true because <laughs> I, after I walked barefoot there, I have never stepped in chicken poo. Well, I did. I helped him clean out the house a little bit. Well, maybe in the house, but otherwise, they're so considerate. <laughs> I don't know how they do it, but what? they. I, I, I'm trying to figure out if they got sort of special areas to, to <laughs> right. put the, you know, wherever they do it, but the... Chicken consciousness. Chicken consciousness. Chicken, chicken that's, consciousness. That would be a good article for you to do your research I know. On. This is cool. <laughs> I'll interview some experts. Yes. This is India on chicken consciousness. We have a lot right. of material I, on chicken consciousness. I really like the black and white birds. They give me more peace than the yellow ones. <laughs> yes. <That's> one, <laughs> one thing that I found when while looking at the, at the chicken salad, we, we had four, and then uh, there was one of them that was really being, they were awful to her. You know, they were really giving her a hard time. She was the, the, lady, the last one that, that came. Mm -hmm. They were really bullying her big time. Then we had a fifth one that was almost twice the size. She's a Brahma, almost twice the size of the other one. And then suddenly everybody forgot to bully number four. And the number four included started bullying number five. And I was like so disappointed <laughs> with, with number four, Kex it is a name. Mm -hmm. why, you did, why did you not learn from the experience of being beaten and bitten and all of these things? She was almost the worst one. And I'm just saying it, it's almost like that when you look globally also, countries mm -hmm. and people. I mean, for instance... Uh, when you look at the people living in Israel being officially being beaten around for, or being beaten up so uh, for so yes, generations yeah. and so on, and then how do they treat the Palestinians? I mean, they if anyone right. should have learned the lesson to treat their neighbors with respect and gentleness and mm -hmm. kindness. What do we see? The absolute opposite. Yeah, that's amazing. Hey, but yeah, before we go. We should we should start winding up. I want to make sure that everybody knows all these website to get that book that your sweetie's writing, and also how they can get in touch with Zen. So why don't we have you both uh, give your contact information so that uh, everybody can reach directly to you? They're looking at me. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, I've actually got my book uh, books on where, on Amazon now. Only took some twenty five years uh -huh. to get it out there. Yeah, it's called Coup d'état in slow motion. Coup d'état in slow motion. It's two volumes, uh, almost a thousand pages in total. Good work. And Shadow of Tears is another one about that trip I went to Iran uh, and on a bicycle. And uh, also, there's one called Remind Me about. The mindset and how you can calm down your mind based on yogic, yogic, uh, yogic philosophy, mm -hmm. which I find absolutely amazing how you can. And also a children's book called Yolanda Yoga Panda for children about the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's really chickens. But my website is lightonconspiracies.com, lightonconspiracies.com. And I am trying to get on the road together with this gentleman. Uh, and maybe also Willem Felderhof, which uh, the, the commercial pilot that is now very much into geoengineering. And, but we have the vehicle, but there's very little gas in the tank. So that what we need is, if somebody believes in what we're doing, help us with that type of thing, you know, be part of the whole thing. Right. Because we just need to go, especially I want to be on location is when these things happen or before they happen to be able to stop them mm -hmm. or expose them as soon as possible to to transform this world. I think so that's please, 
I think that's very important. That's how people can get involved right away. You don't yeah. have to have a YouTube channel. You can just uh, contribute to people who are already up there doing things like Oli. He does it out of the goodness of his heart for all of us. And uh, one good way to get started in uh, helping the awakening would be to help Oli and Zen. Or whoever you respect, whatever right. researcher you respect. But because I know I don't know anyone who's well off doing what we're doing financially. So and it's we're at least we're very simple people, you know. Alex Jones is doing good. Alex Jones is doing Alex good. Alex Jones is doing good. <laughs> No, so it's not. It's He's not got like, super male uh, vitamins, though. He's got, it's just to, to be able to to do what is needed. Yeah, you know? yeah. exactly. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and then and we actually an uh, invitation just came to go to Prague to speak with somebody who's been enthusiastically following following Ole's uh, research for years. And she wants him to speak in Prague, and and then he said, well, maybe. I could come along and maybe Willem can come up too and make it an event. So she's trying to arrange that right now, but again, it's the financial thing. Right. <clears throat> but what's supposed to happen will happen. That's exactly right. You're doing well, as far as myself, I've got a list of 55 of my books. <laughs> uh, uh, number one, <laughs> actually, actually, that an incredible, writing so much and so much incredible info and has not got a book. I don't well, I've got my first one almost. Sweet Ole's promised to help with the format and stuff. Good. First one's, first one's getting there. But there'll be a string, a string of them. Excellent. But look at all the millions of people you're reaching through your website who read all of your work there. So oh, it's amazing. It's a wonderful it's amazing. way to reach yeah. people. We're getting um, friend requests. Uh, we've had like 3,000 in the last 10 days on wow. Facebook. Something just exploded about two or three weeks ago, and wonderful people, just amazing people. You know, there's a little spam in there, but as usual. Mm -hmm. And then we had a trouble with Facebook because we were getting too popular, and some weird thing came up, and they shut us down. Of course, just like Google would do it too. Yeah. But Kim just fixed it downstairs. Good for so, Kim. So That's wonderful. Kim and, Kim and my honey are downstairs talking, and Kim figured it out. But. There. Uh, they're doing anyway, good my stuff. My website is zengardner.com and Facebook is zengardner. And uh, uh, feel free to come and visit. If you want to, if anybody wants to read my particular writings, there's a little clock icon on the navigator bar. That's my timeline. So that's got all my articles from most recent down a year, year and a half. It doesn't have them all, but uh, you know, you can't get enough gigabytes for all that. Mm -hmm. All those years. But anyway, but it's, if anybody wants to go down, I, I suggest people who are intrigued a bit by what I'm saying go down, and the, the titles will usually kind of jar something, and people can find some right. sustenance and inspiration, hopefully. Oh, that's good to know. I always like tips for navigating websites because sometimes they're just overwhelming and confusing. So good to know yeah. about the clock icon. Well, thank you guys both so much. We feel so honored to have you as our friends and have you on World Beyond Belief for those who tune in to watch it. And it's always a great pleasure to be with you both. Thank you guys very, very much. And we'll, talk, we'll talk to you. Thank you very much. And we'll talk to you, oh. uh, talk to you again. Is there anything else thank you like you. to say? Yeah. Well, you guys are just beautiful. Uh, you, you and I realize too. just how beautiful you are. <laughs> You're just beautiful it's people. It's a green background. <laughs> it's a green background. Does wonders for her complexion, doesn't it? Yeah, it's your palette. Almost alive. <laughs> I haven't been able to figure out the lighting. And every time we record a show, Paul just looks like a total white ghost. Casper. I can't no, get it No, you look great. Right. Today it's Today perfect. It's Today it's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> We're the ones that look like... Uh, Police lineup, I think. <laughs> well, it's got dark behind you, though. He did the whole it. Thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Good work. It's on black. We have black screen behind us. Yeah. Oh, it's That's always good. fun to be with you. It's been way too long, Oli. We've we've missed talking to you, and I know you're doing great stuff and enjoying oh. yourself, having fun with your 
loved ones all around you. It's cool. Especially the chickens. Especially yeah. the chickens. I tell you, I'm just, uh, I'm very involved with Jim Fetz and some other people with this series of books. Uh, I, I just made the second one, it's actually the third, called Nobody Died at Sandy Hook. Uh, and that has really stirred a whole lot of shit. Uh, Washington apparently is not very fond of these books, uh, because that, uh, that second book, the first one, and I suppose we didn't go to the moon either, that one started the whole thing, but it's it's a whole series of, of um, uh, researchers and, and PhDs and whatever that are giving their different uh, views on this thing. Then nobody died at Sandy Hook. Same thing. I think there's eight or ten different uh, experts there. <laughs> everything in it. Yeah. And now uh, I'm working on the latest one. It's uh, it's going to be called something that and nobody died in Boston either or something similar to that. Yeah, uh -huh. And it's about the Boston bombing and false flags, where that is also going to be totally exposed in great detail. I mean, down to the smallest little thing. They're, all, they're on Amazon. and uh, they're, They've been really hit hard now. There's been all kinds of uh, attacks from sure. different areas and so on. So, yeah. but, I mean, that's part of the game, and it just shows that you're on track. So if this is our last broadcast, we really had a wonderful time together, <laughs> and we'll meet you on the other side. <laughs> okay. Right, I'm looking forward to the other side, actually, but we're having fun on this side till we get yeah, there. Yeah, I know. Right? I'm in love with you there. Okay, take okay. care, guys. Bye-bye. We love you. All right, we love you. Let's talk soon. Bye -bye. Ciao, ciao. Yes.